let me ask you this. You, I mean, because of what you did as, for a living as a younger person, I mean, being a gymnast and you're like flipping around and you have no fear, like, do you feel like you have no fear in other areas of your life too? Like cars and roller coasters and rides? I think it definitely gives me a, a little bit of encouragement because I've flipped through the air and, you know, have overcome that adversity of just you know spatial awareness and all of that so I do think that I am a bit more gutsy and courageous <laughs> like I would totally love to just floor it if I could and just go um, you know they used to call me lead foot when I got my license but <laughs> yeah I had toned that down a little bit you now know, that you I have had children little, yeah I had a little Mercedes uh, you know SL 500 for a little while. Oh my gosh, it was just a two-door convertible. Oh. I was in Houston, Texas, like loving life, thinking I was so cool. And then, you know, a couple, couple times I was like, mm, okay, I better slow it down. <laughs> Do your kids like roller coasters and rides because I know they're little gymnasts themselves yes they do <laughs> Carmen is such a thrill seeker she loves loves it um, Vincent loves it too but there's sometimes you know he's a little bit like tentative but then when he goes in he goes all the way and he, he goes for it but uh, yeah they love roller coasters just like mom and dad do when you look back on some of uh, the video of your competition and you see this young pint-sized girl who nails everything perfectly. <laughs> and sure, you have those moments when yeah. you fall and yeah. you go, oh, ouch, right? Mm -hmm. um, which I don't think I can even get one foot on the balance beam. I don't know do what you were doing on the balance beam. Um, what do you think when you watch that little girl? Well, I look at that little girl through a different pair of eyes. Uh, obviously, my adult and mother eyes now, but I see someone that I can't believe she went through all that she did and came out a survivor and so many people didn't even have a clue that I was going through all of that and the fact that I could hide that so well for a child I look back and I'm like how did I do that like mm -hmm. you know it's very difficult to hide those things when you're out right. performing and meaning the like not able to eat you were mm -hmm. being pushed and um, to the point of performing on fractures. Right. You were, in essence, being tortured by your coaches. There was abuse going on. There's no doubt about it. You know, abuse is a topic that has come into, you know, light of the media recently. Yeah, quite a I bit. know. There have been a, a lot, lot of stories about mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would imagine, I mean, you were one of, among the first to write about it, especially because you had a celebrity. Um, you know, your, your name uh, holds a lot of weight and you were one of the more well-known gymnasts to come forward and say there are some things that aren't quite right going mm -hmm. on in the world of USA Gymnastics, mm -hmm. especially with Bella and Marta Caroli, right. and you took a lot of heat for it. Mm -hmm. And now what has come to light, even separate from them, although it seems as though they had knowledge of it, allegedly, and haven't, and, and, and didn't do anything about it, but that mm -hmm. there were abuse cases, physical mm -hmm. abuse, sexual abuse of mm -hmm. some young female gymnasts. Uh, where are you on that? You know, I mean, it's certainly a topic of concern. I've been shouting it from the rooftops for a while now. A lot of people believe me. They knew because they contacted me and emailed me and said, look, we believe you. We know there's things going on. We're so happy that you're saying something about it. Um, but again, there's going to be those non-believers and people who they always want proof and you know but first you gotta you gotta show that there's a, a serious problem going on here that we need to make sure that we're addressing and looking into but the unfortunate part is anyone that's ever spoken out against USA Gymnastics is never contacted again to be asked hey how can we make it better so they just kind of push you out of the scenario entirely and they never contact you again and they look at you as like a bad person and that's how they try to depict you to everybody. And that's such a complete false narrative. Yeah. What do you think are the greatest gifts, like in short, what do you think are the greatest gifts that you learned from becoming an athlete, a top performing athlete? Um, never give up. You never know when you're closer than you think. Just at that time where you feel like you wanna give up, there will be an unexpected open door but it's always, you gotta push a little harder. It's like that depiction with that, you know, uh, guy chipping away at like, 
I don't know if you've seen this, but it's like chipping away at like this basically mud. And he and there's the jewels are like on the other side, but he's like a sliver this way. On top, there's a depiction of a man walking away, uh -huh. and he's this close, and the other one on the bottom is still chipping away. And you're never, you know, you always feel like right before you're gonna accomplish that victory, like right before the Olympics for me, it was like, oh my god, I can't wait for this to be over <laughs> in a way, because the training yeah. was so much, and yeah. I was so tired, and my body and my mind and my spirit were like run down. And I was like, I gotta do this though. I gotta keep going right. because I worked so hard for this. And so you play a mind game and you try to motivate yourself. So never give up because you're always closer than you think to that goal. It may take longer. Like I had recently, I would say an 18 year goal that came to life. That's a long time to wait. Yeah, nothing. It's not an overnight success. It's never. No. <laughs> no. And, and Mike and I, uh -huh. you know, my husband Mike and I always say it becomes ten, it's 10 years to become an overnight success. You yeah. cannot become one overnight. Yeah. It's always 10 years when you think yeah. someone came out of the blue and achieved success It usually t they were working on it for years and years and years before you saw them in the mainstream right. or something, you know, right? Um, how much did writing your book off balance teach you about yourself? Did you learn new things about yourself in that process of writing a book? I definitely learned a lot about myself <laughs> uh, I definitely learned a lot of, oh, my neighbor. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, know if he I didn't know if he wanted <laughs> something or what. But, um, so, yeah, I learned a lot about myself writing the book. I learned that I could allow myself to be vulnerable when I thought, I don't know how I can. Um, I pushed myself to be so honest and so raw that I felt good about it. Sometimes it's hard to get to those places, as you know. Well, you challenged me to do the same <laughs> when I wrote. So I know it's very healing. It's very healing. So I learned that I could heal. That was a big step in writing my book. It was like, I had these things inside my heart and I needed to heal so badly. I needed to find a way to be beyond that. And, and also clear up a misconception of what people thought they knew about mm. me. It was, and it wasn't, really out that was like a sidebar it was an additional plus mm -hmm. it wasn't the main reason for me but I wanted people to know the truth from my words from my vantage point of how it actually happened right. then you can make your assessment after reading the book but everybody that's you know right. contacting me after reading they're like wow I didn't know you went through all those for things sure. it's coming from your voice yes. which then literally you had it come from your voice when you recorded the audio version of yes. off balance oh there were times so I got lump in my throat even oh. reading it you know, no matter how many times I've talked about my dad and I've come out, that was the hardest part for me to talk about. Mm -hmm. It was the most deep, deep cuts that I had, mm -hmm. that I had to talk about. And I literally get choked up when I talk about my dad still because of that relationship we had, that give and take, that tug and pull. Totally switching gears, by the way. Do you notice my necklace? I noticed your <laughs> necklace. The Andrea, oh, the Andrea. is awesome. Um, I love it. So that is one of the really <laughs> cool things that I love that you ended up doing on the other side of your career. Obviously, always known for gymnastics. Right. You know, you're a mother of two mm -hmm. children, but you always had it in you to still want to be a businesswoman. Yes. And so I think it's really cool that one of your dreams was to start a jewelry company, yes. and you did it. I you did, did it. Yeah. You had this stick to mm -hmm. You're like, I'm going to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time sitting around <laughs> your kitchen table <laughs> yeah. and like uh -huh. deciding what I wanted. Yes. My to look like, I which I love and is like such a precious item. But that's Aww. been a really exciting part of your life and your My career journey. too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Creations by CNC. Yes, and yes. You. Very proud of it. You know, our custom designs are awesome and the great thing about it is you get you know a personal touch you get to interact with us and we can design your custom vision if you want we make it come to life yeah. we have a lot of fun stuff for the holidays and yes I always wanted to put that business degree to use my mom told me you should do something you're so good with business and yeah, you she are. always believed in me and she always mm -hmm. loved jewelry and so it kind of just started like when I was young my sister and I are like so who are you putting in the will like that ring? I want that ring. She wants it. So it was just <laughs> what like, is it about so, kids doing that? They're I like claiming their mother's jewelry, I know. right? <laughs> it's so funny. My, and my sister uh -huh. and I are like arguing about which ring we want. I said, no, I want to get that ring. I get the anniversary ring. She's like, well, I want that one. I'm just really proud of all that you've done. And thank you for being mm -hmm. here Aww. and for doing this and taking the ride and sharing your story because it's a really cool one. Mm -hmm.